Hi everyone, thank you for joining us here at SGTV. We've got Kathy back on the show. Kathy has picked out some products from one of our contractor favorites selection. So do you want to point to some here that you uh, like the look of or that you've used before and we'll, we'll sort of talk about them and the features? Yes, yeah. so the mini grid stuff, we use this on a daily basis. Um, obviously you've got these different finishes, but they also do it in your white plastic, which is, it's really reasonably priced for doing rewires. We can just get everything in, in either white plastic and give the option to upgrade to the different finishes as well. I just really like it because all the different modules that you can just put in, you just take them out and the different ones you can slot in. So if you've got an intermediate switch, you can just take the different modules out and stick intermediate ones in. Or if you want an intermediate next to a two-way, you literally just get whichever module you want, put it in there. And then the fan isolator ones, I love these because you can fit your fan isolator in next to your fuse so that you can get it all in one, one gang plate, which looks nicer than having a big one or two separate ones. And also if your fan doesn't need a switch, you can put your light switch in there and put it all next to the door, which I really like. These are absolute lifesavers. So they're the easy links uh, for the Patras boxes they are. Yeah, so basically if you've got two back boxes like this, as I'm sure most electricians will know, when you're cutting out of plasterboard, put a dry lining box in. If you go wrong, then you've only got one chance with it really, because if you basically you cut out this size, don't you? And it's got a slot in perfectly, and if it's a bit loose or moves up and down, it's not good. And if you're putting two next to each other, you end up with a thin strip between them, and if that snaps, then your two lugs won't have anywhere to hold the box in and it just ends up a mess. So this thing clips in, you take each lug out. And I only discovered this when I'd made a mess of one. Oh, my apprentice probably, probably not me. No, Blind I think apprentice. it was, it was probably yeah. me. Um, and basically it just clips in next to it instead and it holds them both together next to each other like that with the perfect distance to get your fronts on together next to each other. So yeah, they're really good. Um, these, I haven't not used these before, but I was really interested in looking at them more. Um, you was explaining to me about how they work. Yeah, so these are the stud boxes. I mean, they look similar to your normal Patras boxes, but the selling point behind these is that you screw directly onto your studs. You can also, you've also got ones where you go next to the door frame and you can screw directly onto that. Yeah, so I suppose that'll eliminate where if you cut this, you put this in before you plaster, don't you? Yeah, so yeah. if you cut that one and it goes wrong, you yeah. Screwed. And we've also <laughs> got the bigger one which has got a spirit level so when you can line it up nice and neat Yeah, so well. you're not having to, because that's another problem, getting back boxes straight and level next to each other. It's not so much of a problem in stud work but with on brick walls and stuff it can be hard and it just takes, the, like, not necessarily my apprentice, but it just takes people a longer time to do that whereas these stuck together like ready made yeah. out there. They've also got uh, the stud boxes, they also have these tabs on the front as well. So once you've got it secured on your on your studs, you offer your plasterboard up to up to the wall, give it a, a whack, and it'll pierce the plasterboard. So rather than having to sort of measure out, you can, you've already got your marking points, so you can just go in with your, yes. your plaster saw. Well, I did quite a bit of plastering with Olive when, when I was retraining, and I can see how that would save a lot of time, because otherwise you end up measuring it on. The amount of times that you cut it out wrong, and you have to put a bit of drywall in to fill that bit and stuff, it, I can imagine them definitely being a plus. Yeah. You've also picked this one out. Interested to know what, you know, sort of drew you to this product here. So I really like the look of this because you can see where you bring your 6mm cable into the top or, or 10mm cable into the top and then you can bring more than one feed out there. So quite often you can run a 6mm feed in and feed more than one thing off it then rather than having to have an individual feed for each one. Like I've seen loads of times where people have put multiple things into the singular ones and you're trying to fit more than one cable into one terminal. So this is, looks really good because it's got multiple terminals. So yeah, for that, and it's already made the hook. It comes complete, doesn't it, with a back yeah, box? Yeah, that's and, it. And, uh, and mo most people will, will use it for like a 45 amp uh, feed for a cooker and a, a hob. And like you say, you, you know, you've got multiple terminals there, so you're not trying to wedge it all in and cut your fingers to pieces. Um, I've used these before as well. So these yeah, really th this is the flow range. Um, I mean, with, with the flow products, we're constantly sort of trying to improve them. These are the latest ones in the line, which is the fast fit flow. So have you used these ones before? Yeah, so I did use these previously. Uh, the thing that's really good with them is that you can second fix one of these on before the plaster comes along and you could do your readings then um, when you come to second fix then all you've got to do is cut out your spotlight and pop them in so it does mean you can test before I think the main um, sort of pro with these is if you want to do your insulation resistance testing and you've got fixed down lights where the lamp's part of the fitting you won't be able to do your insulation resistance testing between live and neutral so you'd have to go around and like connect them all 
and then connect not your lamps just connect the cable together to do your reading properly or if you first if you put these on first you can do your insulation resistance testing and then clip your light, light on after obviously it's not as much of an issue if you've got a separate lamp but when you've got an integral fitting it's just a nightmare for insulation resistance testing but they make it a lot quicker and easier um, they are nice and easy to use you've just got the unlocking part on the front pop them open it's a lever oh, hinge or those. Yeah. they're new to the last ones that i use that's it makes it nice and quick and easy and, and they, they are secure push fit there you go just pinch the sides all oh, right yeah that's nice and easy oh yeah. wow that's great I'll look at some of them again, yeah. push fit ones. Quite handy on, on the back, they've also got like the strip lengths as well. Oh yeah, that's good, yeah. Um, they've definitely come on since last time I used them. Looking at these as well, I'll just find the, the top for that one. One of the features is you can't connect them wrong. I know some of them out there, like where you've got a three to a four, you can end up doing a you know the wrong connection and you could make in your neutral live and so on, but you can't do that. They're open. Yeah. Oh, look at that fits that one as well. Oh, that's good then, yeah. So Yeah, like, I noticed so that with them. They've got the um, thing at the bottom, haven't they? So they can only go in one way. So yeah, I mean, I'll give you a quick demonstration on um, putting these in. I'll push for it oh, nice. So they work for both stranded and solid cable. Yeah. Oh, that's good. There you go, nice tight hold. Also, you've got the, like, the cable grips inside there as well. Put the top on. You can lock the top there. Oh, yeah, I think that's a new thing as well since last time I used them, so that's yeah. good. And that's it, that's your connection done. I mean, it'd take me half an hour to use a traditional junction box and I'll probably end up throwing it against the wall. So. No, I love push fit <laughs> stuff. It's definitely much quicker. It saves so much time. I think it's good how they've got the, like you said, those little dividers inside for the cables. They fit snugly in. If you want to see more of these, like the contractor favourite products, we've got a section on our website for the contractor favourite. So please do check it out. Um, it's on our main website. We'll put the link in the description. Hopefully you, you guys out there have found it interesting and helpful. Um, I know, Cathy, you, you've mentioned these are nice, easy products to use, you know, on a regular basis. So um, yeah, if you'd like to see more from me and Cathy, then please do like and subscribe and you'll see more on the SGTV site. Hi everyone, we're here on the Time is Money Challenge Board with Cathy from Little Miss the fastest time we've got at the minute um, is 2 minutes 7 seconds I do believe so how do you think you'll get on with that time? I'll give it a good go. The rules are simple, you have two obstacles. The first one being is you need to change the fuse in the SCU but some clever clogs have come along and plumbed in the way of it. The second obstacle I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with as you come to your back box and it's been filled in with plaster. So you need to chisel it all out as best as you can so that you can correctly wire a double socket to the board. Once it's secured to the board, the time stops. The fastest time wins. It may sound easy, but trust me, it's not. Let's see how our next competitor gets on. So, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, let's go. Kathy's quick on the mark, she's making short work of the fuse. Right, done. And that's the first obstacle done. On to the second one. I think we're bad. She's got to chisel out as much of this plaster as she possibly can so that she can fit a double socket in there. <laughs> I hope I have to tidy up as well. <laughs> you have got to tidy up, Kathy, that's part of the challenge. That's all the plaster out. Right, now she's got to get the socket wired on. A little bit of plaster left on the lugs there. Um, good, good, right, we're getting there now. <laughs> this is an incredible time, this is. Never got a time to do that before. There we go, earth sleeve on. Now this might look easy, but trust me it's not. Especially when you've got the cameras on you and me breathing down your neck. Right now, all she's got to do is get this socket wired on and screw to the board. Yep. <laughs> Long screws ever. Right, we're and on. we're done. Two minutes, 48 seconds. Oh, no. So it's not the fastest time we've had, but that's still probably up there in the top three. So <laughs> that is really good, Cathy. How did you find the challenge? There's a lot of pressure when you're getting timed, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, I'd just like to thank you for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure um, and we'd like to see thank you again you. soon. Thank <laughs> you.